It's September 27th, 2017, and this is episode 138 of The Small Business Show. Welcome to The Small Business Show at businessshow.co, the show that's by, for, and about small business owners. I'm Shannon Jean in Lafayette, California. And this is a spot where my co-host Dave Hamilton usually says he's coming to us from Durham, New Hampshire. But Dave is out this week, so we're going to do things a bit different. I'm going to fly solo for the first time. Today we're going to talk about a topic that has hammered and bothered me uh, during my entire small business career. uh, And that's accounting and financial statements. And and I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but trust me, hang out for a bit with me today and I guarantee you'll learn a tidbit or two or even Better yet, when you listen to me, you'll leave, you'll have some advice for me, and you can uh, send a comment to feedback at businessshow.co and uh, correct me where I'm wrong and give me some advice, and uh, I would love it. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about some of the most common mistakes that are made uh, related to accounting and financial statements. And, and the reason I'm coming at you with this topic is uh, looking back at some of our, our interviews, uh, and as you know, uh, one of the questions I always ask is, you know, what's the best mistake? Uh, and I'm making quote uh, symbols with my fingers there. Um, what's the best mistake you've ever made during, you know, your small business career? We always ask these folks. And over and over, we hear one, uh, a very common uh, response to that is it's something related to accounting, the software, not doing something right, financial statements. Um, so I thought it would be uh, good for us to get together and talk about some of this stuff and, uh, talk about some common mistakes. So uh, I'm going to assume that you're using some kind of accounting software, QuickBooks, AccountEdge, you know, Microsoft Dynamics, whatever it is that you're using to track, uh, you know, the money and expenses and things in and out of your business. If you're not doing that, obviously, that's the first step you need to get into. Um, But it can be challenging too, just just on that. I mean, I've I've always had two different systems in, in my businesses. And it can be challenging to keep things reconciled. So you really have to be on it. You know, we've always had either, you know, a strong web uh, presence uh, with a, you know, online point of sale, if you will, a CRM software tool that I've, I've loved that part of it because I could build something that, uh, uh, and, and make it work the way I wanted to, to work exactly versus a piece of accounting software uh, that's, you know, for a small business, you're buying a piece of off-the-shelf uh, software, and, and it's not very malleable. You can't really change it up too much. Uh, so you have to adapt to it. And I'm not very adaptive like that, so I'm constantly butting my heads up against, you know, how do we make this work when I can make, you know, uh, a piece of web software jump through, you know, hoops and do anything we want. Uh, but then we have to export that data into our accounting software. And, and we've done it in multiple ways and had, you know, in-between uh, apps, cleanup things, uh, and then getting it into accounting. So that's something you really have to work on. But we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about financial statements. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is, you know, do you know how to read them? You know, if you went to business school and, you know, you're certainly much smarter than I am uh, and, you know, you know what's going on with your P&L and your balance sheet and you know what all those numbers mean – That's awesome. And that's going to help you be all that much more successful. But if you're like me, uh, that didn't go to business school and just started a a business because I fell in love with a product, um, you know, the Mac and Apple products back when I was in college, um, I I didn't have a lot of background with that. But I knew how to make money. And But there's a big difference. You know, the way I like to look at it is you, you can be very good at making money, but building wealth is much more difficult. And And your financial statements are what helps you to build that wealth. So if if you don't know how to read them, you're you're stuck. You you can't even get started. And you know you need to be able to read three documents. You know your your profit and loss statement, which is I think one of the easiest things to read because you can see, okay, if you're buying inventory, I bought this stuff. Uh, you know I bought it for a hundred bucks and I've sold it for a hundred and fifty. And then uh, here's all these expenses I incurred. You know whatever, uh, you know gas for my car you know, internet, all this kind of stuff. You you can just see it. It, It's a very, it's a great document. Um, 
I think a little more difficult to interpret is the balance sheet and what those actual numbers mean and what trends it can help you spot um, how things are going with your business. Because you need to know how to do it, how to read it and interpret it. Because certainly if you ever have to go borrow money, the bank or whoever you're borrowing, they're going to know how to dig into it very deep, uh, deeply. And you need to be able to answer their questions and respond to any concerns they have. So, so you definitely want to do that. Um, one of the easiest ways to do it is to ask your accountant to show you. Just say, hey, sit down and show me line by line what each of these things means and how, how it's reflected. Um, and then, you know, it, it, it can work great. Um, if you don't have an accountant, uh, I'm going to put a couple links up in the show notes uh, up at, you know, quickbooks.com. They, you know, help you walk through the balance sheet and the P&L. Um, and as well as the third document I think you need to be able to understand is a cash flow statement, which could be arguably the most important thing for you to understand because cash, as you know, and what we've said here on the show many times, uh, is the lifeblood of your business. You know, profits are incredibly important, but if you run out of cash, you're really in trouble. Um, I'll also put a few other links uh, up there, you know, easy to understand things that'll help you uh, understand their statements. But I really would suggest you have your bookkeeper uh, or your accountant sit down with you and kind of just walk through everything and and show you where red flags are. It's like, oh, you know, you want to keep take a look at this ratio. You want to do that. So, uh, you know, definitely do that before you go any further. The, the second mistake I think, um, and I make this mistake all the time, is not reviewing the financial statements frequently enough. I tend to focus on the top line, which is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really driving sales and, and revenue, trying to grow things. That's the fun part of the business for me. I love that. Uh, I'm, I'm good at that. That's where my skill set is. But often, because I don't review the financials enough, they come back to bite me in the ass <laughs> where I'm thinking, oh, we're doing great. And I know we're making money because I bought product X for a buck and sold it for two. And you can't run it on your gut like that. You know, you're not going to build wealth. You can make some money, you can make a living, but I think you really need to get well beyond that. How often is is enough? Certainly monthly, and and uh, certainly towards the end of the year, maybe you need to do it a little little more frequently than that because you're going to need to start making some decisions uh, that are going to impact your financials and. Uh, you need to look at that with plenty of time to discuss it with your accountant, your business partner, uh, to see what's uh, what the best decisions are related to timing. And uh, so, so frequencies kind of dependent, but certainly I think you need to look at it monthly. Um, and one of the things I just mentioned, another common mistake is focusing on revenue instead of cash. You know, it's just, in my experience, it's easier to focus on revenue, but it's not usually not always the right thing to do. It's another benchmark, and obviously you have to, to grow it or keep it steady, and when revenue drops, it's a cause for concern. But the cash is the lifeblood of your business, like I said. You know, if you learn how to create and understand a cash flow statement, it's going to help you on that revenue front as well, because you're going to see that flow that comes in uh, into your bank. And it's a direct reflection of how your revenue's doing, but you can spend yourself right out of business. I mean, I've almost you know almost done it a couple times where, you know, you just can't. How can we not have any cash when things are going so good? And you really need to focus on that cash flow. It, I think it's one of the least understood documents, um, and I'm speaking from firsthand experience because I've made every single one of these mistakes. Uh, and, and I often continue to do it because I get excited about, look, you know, revenue, everything's going up. And then, you know, if I don't jump in and take a look at the cash flow and the, the balance sheet, something may be off. Um, so take a look at those things and, and do it frequently so you can catch problems. Um, back to how often you ought to do it. Um, Dave's not here to keep me moving forward. So uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit um, as I you know, think of these things. But uh, another problem with not reviewing them frequently enough is that you'll miss things, you know, little problems that you could kind of start to see as an account looks strange um, or things aren't being coded correctly, which can happen a lot. If you have a, a, you know, let's say an expense account that's, 
you know, not being coded correctly. Y- you can be fooled into thinking you're making a lot more money than you really are. And that can hurt you on the cash flow side of things too. And it, it, I, I've had this happen where, again, I look and say, wait, you know, we're really profitable. How come we don't have any money in the bank? Um, and often if, if you wait months on end, these things get they they balloon up. Where if they're small, when you look at them at the end of the month or maybe the fifteenth, uh, you know, for the previous month, you can you can catch those things sooner. So now another area that I think some would consider a mistake. Um, I, I've really been challenged with this, but uh, I think that sharing your financials or a subset of your financials with your employees is a really good thing. It's a difficult thing, but uh, I, I think I have some points to make that you might find you know um, useful. Um, the first thing, if you're going to share it, you have to break it down or break it into pieces because you know you need to keep some stuff confidential, primarily salaries and things. You know, I, I know you can read online about oh, you know, this company lets everybody see the salaries, but in my experience, that's a huge mistake. Um, and you know, that that's just a confidential piece of information between you and the employee. Um, but you can break out chunks of, the, of things or consolidate, you know, salaries can go into one account. Uh, you can have your, you know, numbers in there as well. Or if you're taking a draw, an owner's draw, you can pop that out. Um, or you can code your own officer's salaries and just not include those. Um, but probably putting it all together, I think is great. Um, and the, the you want to make it clear when you, before you get started is that, Hey, this is obviously important information. I want to share this with you. I think you'll find it very valuable, but it's it's confidential. It's our trade secrets. This is uh, you know really important. Everybody understands that. Um, you know, if you have an employee manual, hopefully you've had them sign a confidentiality agreement that's in there. Um, but you want to share that first, and and you know I'd like to keep it light, but you want to make sure you now they understand it's important, serious. Um, the main reason to share with you know financials with your with your employees is so they understand exactly how your company makes money and where all the money goes. One of the problems I've had, and I'm not great at sharing this information with my employees because I you know I uh, for a number of reasons. One is um, I feel that so much of it is beyond their control, uh, the lower level employees especially that. You know, the, the so many of the expenses they have no impact on. So to uh, bring that out as a tool or a hammer, if you will, to it's like, look, look how much money we're spending here. Well, you know, the guy in the warehouse has no impact on that. But but that's wrong. <laughs> you know, they need to know what it is, what it takes to run the business, and you know, so so you you can explain how we really make money here, uh, and then where all the money goes. Because if you don't share this information. I guarantee people think you're making a lot more money than you really are. And and that's a that can be a problem because you know uh, they they judge on the way they see things, you know, uh, what kind of car does the owner drive, you know, are you traveling a lot, what's I mean just lots of other stuff. And I think that the employee the employer employee relationship is such that the employee is always going to think the employer is taking more money than they probably are. Uh, and that the business is making more money. And so I think it's a great habit to get into. I think you have to structure it carefully, but I, I definitely think it's worth sharing. Um, and again, you're going to share general details, uh, you know, a subset of your financials. You're not going to, you know, break it down crazy. But um, so they're going to learn, you know, how you're making money, where the expenses are. Um, and you're going to use it to compare, you know, past, current, and, and, uh, past and current. Uh, performance, how we're doing, how we did last year, and and you're going to compare it to where we're at now. And I think you're going to set, use it to set future expectations. You're going to develop the system to, you know, okay, do we want to grow revenue? Are we trying to double our, our revenue? Are we trying to grow by 10%? What is it? You know, what are are the company's goals? And so it's a great opportunity to tell them, hey, you know, okay, last year we did a million dollars in sales. This year we'd like to do, you know, 1.25 or whatever, you know, the numbers are. Um, and, and I think then you can also use it to explain that growth just for the sake of growth isn't uh, what we're looking for, we're looking to maximize uh, the return on that growth. So if you know if you're doing a million dollars and you do you know 
a, a, a million two five and you didn't make any extra money, is it worth doing that extra business? So you, you know you, you can get some, some insight into that and talk with them. Uh, again, you want to keep it simple. You got to remember that uh, these folks, for the most part, are not going to be listening to the, a podcast like this. They're not going to click on the links that I'm going to put in the show notes to help you get educated. They're not going to talk to your accountant. So you're going to need to explain it. And, and maybe you need to have your bookkeeper sit in on your meeting and uh, or invite your accountant to come over and, and help explain some of the terms to them. I think it could be really productive. Um, uh, and and the, having a finance person there can head off some of the, you know, maybe uncomfortable questions that, that get asked. I, I don't know, you know, something that might come up like that. Um, again, making it clear that this is confidential. I kind of loop around and mention that a few times during your meeting. And then maybe the most important thing, it, you know, you're trying to be transparent with them. You want to tell them that. Because I, I think most small businesses are not sharing their financials with their employees um, or a subset of them. But if you're going to be transparent, you have to follow through with it. You know, everybody in your company wants to make more money, including you. So if you set some expectations and say something like, hey, if we hit these these marks or, you know, if the system we're creating uh, works and it generates X, uh, you know, number of additional dollars in profit – we can all make more money. Well, you the next time you have that you know meeting about financials, if you've hit those benchmarks, you need to follow through and make sure it happens to them if you want to keep their confidence. Um, so the you know sharing the financials it can be tricky. It can be a double edged sword, um, but I think it can be a really powerful tool. I wish that I used it better, um, uh, you know, during various times uh, you know in, in my career and very small businesses that I've owned. But uh, I think it's worthwhile. If you're doing it, I would love to hear about it. You, you know, I, I'd love to have you on the show, um, or if you want to send an email to you know feedback at businessshow.co, we would love to hear your method. It would be great. Um, another common mistake is only talking to your accountant around tax time. Uh, I, again, I've made that same mistake. You, you get so busy and so focused on the, the, you know, what's going on or meeting, you know, setting the system up and, and hitting those benchmarks that y- you don't often take the time to take a breather, go talk to your accountant, show them what's going on, um, or, or your bookkeeper, if they're giving you that guidance, uh, it's definitely worthwhile because you need help. They're, they're going to see things that you're not looking at because you're not an accountant. You're not a finance person. Um, and especially, again, towards the end of the year, you want to talk with them ample time before the end of the year, you know, a few months ahead. Because let's say you had a, a, an incredible year and you you know generated tons of profits. Well, your finance uh, advisor, your accountant, your bookkeeper can help you, you know, uh, maybe offset some of that by looking at your books and hey, you know, um, I know we need to buy a new whatever, forklift, racks or whatever, a company van, you know, you're going to pay a lot in these taxes or the business is going to be, you know, hit these tax numbers. Let me give you some options for how to offset those. Um, we've had that happen where we had a, you know, a, a great, you know, two or three years with one of my businesses and got to the point where he said, hey, we really need to, you uh, you know, set up a profit sharing and a 401k program that will, you know, disperse some of these funds into not all the employees accounts, but, uh, you know, the owners of the business accounts and do some matching. And there's some great tax planning there that you can use to reward your employees and yourself and, and you know, mitigate those, uh, those taxes that you would otherwise have to pay. But you can't do it uh, in February, March, as you're coming up on, on, you know, tax season. And again, I make, I've made this mistake all the time. I don't think I've uh, I've filed a a corporate tax return in April, uh, in, you know, years, we always are pushing things out and, you know, getting extensions and things, but we, we, there are certain decisions that have to be made before the end of your fiscal year. So if that's, you know, in the end of December, um, then you need to do it and give your, uh, you know, counting plenty of time. Maybe you need to have a different fiscal year. If if the you know holiday season, um, you know October, November, December, if that's your biggest busiest time of the year, and you just can't think about you know meeting with an accountant, going through stuff because you're just hustling to take advantage of all those sales. You know, maybe your fiscal year needs to end in uh, 
you know, September. So it's done. And then you're, you're talking about it during the summer when things are a little, you know, more calm. And then you're ramping up and your first quarter is, is really the, you know, first year. I think, you know, I think Apple does that. And uh, certainly there's some reason for that. Um, so I think that's really important. Uh, and uh, so what I've got is I'm going to put some information up on the website at businessshow.co. I'll put a few li- links up there. Some accounting things are not hopefully too dry, uh, but, you know, quick read here and there. And take a look and, you know, come over either to the support group up on Facebook at businessshow.co slash Facebook or, you know, send an email, feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear from you and either tell us your story, ask your questions. If we can't ask her, ask it correctly or answer it correctly, we'll uh, point you in the right direction. And again, uh, you know, I'm not a finance person, not an accountant. All this stuff, you really need to follow up with your team of advisors and get some additional clarification on things. But uh, you definitely want to take a look at it. And uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Thanks for hanging out with me today as we ran the show all uh, on my own. Hopefully it didn't, uh, wasn't too bad for you. And we will be back with you next week. Keep living the charmed life. And we will talk soon.